Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EduSat Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in Sustainable Development Goals, we will be talking about health and well-being. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor Singh is Professor in Department of Geography, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. He is also Vice President of International Geographical Union. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome Sir. Thank you Amritji. Dear viewers, 7th April is World Health Day and today we are going to, it is a very appropriate occasion to discuss topic health and well-being. Health and well-being are complementary to each other. So, I would like to discuss this topic in a more comprehensive way, take into consideration of global and national initiative and then also I would like to come to a specific empirical evidences from our own country. Health and well-being is influenced by global ecosystem, climatic stability, biodiversity, socio-economic factors, lifestyle of people, community structure, local economy, activity, built environment, several factors driving forces are responsible for a status of health and well-being in any region. I would like to take this topic linking with International Council of Science important initiative taken on health and well-being in changing urban environment, a system approach. The project examines urban life, health and disease patterns profiles, all of which are rapidly changing and require novel integrated approach it for improving our policy making. This project, this program recognizes the constraints due to the diversity in income level, culture, governance, capacity and availability of data. Here I would like to mention that better health information, better health management. And so that is why we will try our best to how we can improve our understanding regarding health data. And in this context, I would like to mention that policy makers, civil society, scientists, administrators, they all and then the people at large, they all you know have to work together and more specifically the people from informal sector or the uh, underdeveloped region. They need to interact and under, understand for looking, analyzing the strength and weaknesses of each individual approach and to see how that understanding improve our system process. So this project deals with six system approach. Now coming to urban health and well-being, first I would like to mention about the what is urban environment. This includes natural, built and institutional elements that determine the physical, mental, social health and well-being of people who live in cities and towns. You know health is determined by several factors individually and combined in combined with some other factors like exposure to outer environment, sanitation condition, living conditions, land use land cover, eating habits, occupation, daily routine and it is very appropriate to mention also that we have to deal with vulnerable groups living in either in rural area or urban area. 
This includes children, older people, people with disability, people living in more socio-economically deprived neighborhoods, what we call slums or informal uh, settlements. Now, through this diagram, I would like to put before you pattern of urbanization in the world and you can see that large part of you know uh, developed world like Australia and also uh, North America all having a very high urban population. But when you come to Asia, we have a still less urban population. But if you will take the concentration of city having more than 10 million population or more, then you can find Asia, particularly India, China, Japan, Korea, all they have, you know, Manila, they all have many mega city, what it is called the mega city or metropolitan city. Now, I would like to put before you top 6 urban cities of the world, first Tokyo, followed by Seoul, Mexico City, New York City, Mumbai, Sao Paulo. And what you are getting from this table and earlier map that in developing country, people are rushing to big city, large city for getting income, employment, better services, education including uh, education facility. I would like to bring before you here a state of Asian urbanization. You know, present century is Asian century and more specifically I would like to mention Asian urban century. You can see the data, world urban population in 2009 was almost 3.4 billion and Asia urban population of about 1.72 billion between 2010 and 20 projection is that 411 million people will be added to Asian city. 60 percent of the growth in the world urban population and again by 2020 4.2 billion urban population of the world and approximately 2.2 will be in Asia. City provides 80 percent of economic base, but generate significant environmental footprints, you know, including content, contamination of air and water and approximately 75 percent of greenhouse gas emission. Now, it is very important to see major challenges for urban health and well-being. Only half of the household in urban areas of 91 country with comparable data available have access to piped water. Water is a very important essential needs and you know water borne diseases are more prominent in many underdeveloped region including India. About 3.7 billion people live in cities today a further 1 billion people will be aided by 2030 with 90 percent growth being in low and middle income country. So, it is very important to see to deal health and well being in such low and middle income country. For achieving sustainable development goals as you know on 25th September 2015 sustainable development goal was launched by UN Secretary General on behalf of the United Nations and it is very important, uh, 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 it has very important component like health and well-being. Inclusiveness is a very important aspect and in this context I would like to discuss health inequality and this health inequality is emerging as threat to well-being. In 79 low and middle income country, children in the poorest are prone to health risk in comparison to the rich. In nearly 9 to 10 countries of which comparable data was available, 
the urban poor did not achieve the MDG, Millennium Development Goal target for reducing under 5 mortality. That was a very, very important component of uh, Millennium Development Goals. I would like to quote here the Assistant Director General of uh, Health System and Innovation of WHO World Health Organization. I quote, there is an urgent need to identify and reduce health inequities particularly for the most vulnerable population such as the nearly 1 billion people living in urban slums or informal settlements today." Unquote. Now you can see the this through this map I am putting before you the world's most effective health care uh, uh, system and if you will see this efficiency score uh, for many part not available, but more uh, efficiency I think uh, more than 80 percent efficiency we have in uh, Australia or the many part uh, of Asia also. Uh, Scandinavian country, but large part of Africa is still data is not available. So, data is very important aspects, better health data needed for better health management in many part of the globe. Planning cities for people and health and if you will see this about 400 million women men and children around the world are excluded from what is a basic human right access to affordable health care. So, water you have seen the what is the situation availability of water and then the quality of water and then access to affordable health care, health inequities and vulnerable population particularly nearly 1 billion people living in urban, urban slums and informal settlements and it is projected that this you know will be doubled by 2050. So, we will have the more pressure on our whatever scarce uh, health services available with us. Increasing urbanization poses a unique set of health challenges including the double burden of non-communicable diseases and infectious diseases, air pollution, access to water and sanitation, need to improve the nutrition, increase physical activity and build resilience to health emergency. In this context, I would like to mention that science advice is needed for developing country, particularly in the time of health emergency. If you will see the this diagram, this diagram shows our total spending a percent of the total and now you can see the situation of India is very bad. If you will uh, uh, compare with United States, they have more spending, even Australia spending on health, you know, they have highest spending. So, in on health issue Australia, South Korea, USA these three countries are spending a lot. In our uh, in, in India, uh, Canada, uh, Mexico we have less spending. So, now first important task before us to improve a spending on health, expenditure of health annual budget on the health is very, very important and needed. Then we can provide different type of health facility in at all the time, all the places. Old age population, if you will see almost the 901 million old age over 60 you know uh, years of age uh, population is there and 67 percent population currently in developing country. So, it is now responsibility 
due to increase of life expectancy, we have now also the increase of population in this group and we have to take care of. We do not have adequate social security system. This social security is also linked with population growth in many developing country including India. Now you see the ca cancer mortality uh, uh, here before the age of 70 years. And if you see this data, particularly uh, we have the more you know death due to the cancer in lower middle income countries. High income country due to the high spending on health, they have less number of the death. Even in poor country, they have uh, not very substantial, but low upper you know middle income countries require careful biophysical geographical inquiry in order to examine these aspects in a in an more integrated and holistic way. Many times we have epidemics. Now you will see that the in Africa, many country of Africa, Guyana, Sierra Leone, Liberia, this very severely affected by Ebola outbreaks. Past in our country, we also suffer due to plague, uh, uh, dengue, several other epidemics time to time come. It is very important, it is a part of the health emergency and policy makers should take plan well in advance in order to provide better health facility in the time of emergency. So, better preparedness needed in this context. Child malnutrition is not phenomena of the past, particularly in the underdeveloped region, lower middle uh, income countries. And you can see ultimate goal of UNICEF, World Health Organization or World uh, Bank Group is that for all children to be the free of malnutrition in all its part. Now you can see we have 159 million children around the world are still affected by the malnutrition. There are 41 million overweight children in the world, about 10 million more than there were two decades ago. So you can see the data and statistics, very substantial uh, growth in this uh, aspects, overweight children. Uh, Wasting still threaten the lives of 50 million children uh, across the globe. And so malnutrition is a very, very, you can see the measles vaccination coverage among one year of the old uh, child. And if you will see very less in Africa, if you will come to the South Asia also this figure is less in comparison of northern or eastern part of Asia or even South America, situation of South America is better than us and Canada. Here it is very appropriate to also mention about different types of the child labor, children in plantation and farms, children in mining and quarrying area, uh, children in the manufacturing company, children in unconditional uh, uh, worst farm. In city, you can find the children are engaged in the uh, domestic servant. So, it is very important to abolish this system and child should go to school. Better education facility, we have to reduce dropout rate from schools so that the children you know, should participate in the educational process and get education. 
change in the under 5 mortality rate between 90 and uh, 15 if you will see here also large part of uh, USA uh, mortality is uh, northern part of uh, Asia if you will see the in the 90 and then comparing with the 2015 now we have substantially changed no doubt we have some improvement if you will see the this diagram earlier our uh, India was part of the uh, high mortality rate in 1990, but it, 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 we now move to the low mortality rate in 2015. But still the number is very high and we have to reduce the infant mortality rate. Global child mortality rate if you will see this the data here in the comparison of the world. East Asia, Pacific region, Europe, Northern America and data is starting from the 1960 to 2012. If you will see now the gradually decreased very substantial improvement I think uh, uh, due to the many steps taken by states, policy makers and many uh, community groups, but it requires more and more efforts and initiative. Healthy life and sanitation is dignity, dignity and so that is why you know the government of India has a, a very important initiative it is known as Swaksh Bharat Havina, Clean India Campaign. The provision of sanitation is a key development intervention without it ill health dominate a life without dignity. Simple having access to sanitation increases health, well-being and economic productivity. Inadequate sanitation impact individual, household, community and country. Nearly 40 percent of the world population almost 2.4 billion have no access to hygiene means of personal sanitation. So, we have to take care of these aspects. Uh, this requires the careful you know uh, attention of our policy makers. Now, you can see we have the many disasters, flood, drought and water. 40 billion hours spent per year in sub-Saharan Africa collecting the water. So very that is a very important. 36 percent drop in economic output. You know, um, 443 million school days lost annually due to the water-related diseases. One million cases of malaria reported in our own country, India, largely the result of the uh, flood waters what I would like to call the waterborne uh, diseases. As you know due to the uh, climate change like El Nino, La Nina, various several factors are operating and here I would like to bring before you several health consequences of El Nino also uh, starting from malnutrition to communication diseases, waterborne diseases, reduce access to health care, uh, respiratory diseases. Uh, mental health and psychological effects, waterborne diseases, disruption of health services, these are the some of the major consequences and I we have to take. Now here I would like to mention that during health emergency this this aspects are very very important. We have to take care of the all different linkages. Sometimes it is beyond human, our human mind to identify several driving forces or health consequences coming from uh, El Nino. So, apart from this El Nino, we have several other health consequences of common disasters like flood or drought. You can see poverty is not phenomena of the past in our country. And top 10 country you can see the largest share of the global extreme poor as per 2010 data and India is still has 33 percent you know. Then followed by China 13 percent, Nigeria 7 percent, Bangladesh you know less. Then we have Indonesia, Pakistan, Tanzania. Nutrition, various way it is possible to provide the nutrition dairy products like milk, 
help to support better health and growth of children in places where malnutrition you know exist feed the future partners with businesses to get innovative technology to dairy farmers and provide training and financial support to a small enterprises so animal husbandry fisheries uh, dairy uh, product these are the very very important then traditionally also we get the uh, from the pulsage the protein several uh, food items we have to plan accordingly in rural area so that people should get the income now you can see investment in family planning and reproductive health is also very very important women in developing country almost 225 million women in developing country have an unmet need for family planning and due to this you know many due to the uh, financial region several other you know maybe right or wrong region but women in the uh, uh, impact here i would also like to uh, uh, see the impact 74 million you know due to the unmet need 74 million you know unplanned pregnancy 28 million unplanned you know births 36 million abortion every year so investment in family planning is very very important and so that is why it is possible to reduce the unintended pregnancy by 70% reduce unsafe abortion 74% this data coming from a very very uh, important initiative taken by the women you know uh, in collaboration with the who women group and here one data i would like to put before you uh, from population institute that if women contraceptive needs were fully addressed i think number of women needing medical care because of the unprevention would drop from 8.4 million to 2.2 million so very substantial you know drop will be there safe and legal abortion would drop from 16 million to 6.6 million unsafe abortions would drop 74 million from 20 million to uh, you know 10 uh, 5 million the number of maternal deaths due to unsafe abortion would drop from 22000 to 4200 so what i would like to bring before you the small initiative in the form of the family planning program can provide a lot of here you can see this happiness level by country and we have to because link this this is a very important part of our well being you know many country usa canada australia you know brazil they have more you know happiness index but when you will come to africa large part of the south asia that index is very less and so it is very important to analyze this urban environmental factors and their impact in the public health take into consideration of the natural factors like a climate land use land cover altitude demographic population size economic sectoral social availability of medical establishment then you can see this the habitat 3 is now in the process of uh, you know uh, preparation they are highlighting learn more about my city engage with others to make life in the city contribute to get an inclusive and universal new urban agenda repeat habitat every world you know very important and finally i would like to say that the analysis of public health in urbanized area can be taken to consideration of the medico demographic indicator statistical data analysis assessment of morbidity comparative analysis of morbidity and mortality structure typological classification and development and journey of the research area and through this it is possible to improve our understanding and we can move towards the better health and well being thank you
So dear viewers, we are now focusing on uh, Indian uh, case study, particularly regarding the health and well-being program. And first I would like to start with process of urbanization, a state of urbanization in our country. If you will see uh, urban development processes in India, I think Indian mega cities, growing urbanization, industrialization and metropolitan development has taken place. People are moving to cities in search of high income, employment, improved services and access to various type of amenities. Urban population of India is 377 million, which is more than 10 percent of the world and 21 percent of Asia. Now, this poses a very substantial threat to our urban ecosystem, bringing unprecedented pressure on environmental quality. If you will see the data, we have 377 million. The 93 million top 10 city, you know, have population of 93 million. Number of metropolitan cities, we have 53. 160 million people living in metropolitan area. 52 percent is the urban share of GDP in 2004 and 5. And level of urbanization is 31 percent. Means 31 percent almost people. Uh, are living in urban areas. Now you can see the spatial distribution of urbanization. We have the high urbanization more than 35 percent and above in states like Gujarat, Maharashtra, uh, uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, then Mizoram, but and Punjab. We have the less urbanization in uh, states like uh, Himachal Pradesh, Bihar, Assam, then large part of northern India starting from Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh. Most important aspects of urbanization is metropolitan growth in our country. And more specifically after economic reforms and liberalization during the 1990s, massive inflow of foreign capital to India increase in employment provided an impetus for urbanization. If you will see the million plus city has increased 
12 in 1981 to 23 in 1991, 35 in 2001, uh, about 37.85 percent of the total urban population and now 53 in 2011 as per census of India. If you see the distribution of population in different class of towns, so through diagram you will be un able to understand from one own way that large concentration of population in India we have in class 1 city and million city. Here I would like to bring before you largest urban agglomeration like Greater Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, these are the largest. In northern India, particularly Delhi is attracting very substantial population from different part of rural area. Broadly speaking, 40 percent people in urban areas coming through rural to urban migration. If you will come to the southern India, Bangalore, Hyderabad attracting a very substantial population from rural area. Now you can see through this map large concentration of million cities is starting from Punjab to West Bengal. And so what is the important impact of such urbanization, polarized urbanization, shortage of housing, public transport system, noise pollution, air pollution, water pollution, waste disposal. I would like to discuss these aspects uh, taking the empirical data from Delhi and Kolkata. Now you can see the if you rural few minutes I would like to devote on rural India how this the women and children are suffering from anemia and underweight. This is we have seen at a globally what is happening underweight children, but now in our country. 40 to 50 percent uh, pregnant women are anemic. I am taking a data from one Kangra district where we did some survey. 8 to 9 child are underweight of 0 to 5 months out of 12 child and 5 children are chronically underweight. This is a very, very important you know uh, figure. This shows the status of health and well-being in our country. So, malnutrition continues to be the very, very important agenda for our policy maker and this aspect uh, requires careful, you know, policy intervention through incentive and disincentives. Main regions driving forces are insufficient and unbalanced diet, low consumption of fresh green vegetables and daily diets, working hour even sometime the more many time you know demographic factors are also responsible like increase of population, shift in de uh, 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 demography, rise in disposable income household in the uh, uh, income, increase in incidence of lifestyle related diseases, rising literacy, sometime economic factors also influence tax benefit and so that many people taking made, uh, such a steps health insurance is very, very important aspect. Through this diagram you will be able to understand the what is the state of you know uh, uh, situation in India. You can see the all southern state like Maharashtra, uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, Kerala, these all have Karnataka having the better health facility in comparison of the other you know. Uh, states like Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, this all lagging behind. And if you see the moderate health facility, then we have the uh, like Haryana, Punjab, you know, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, and then northern Indian states. So now, you know, through this map, it is possible to prioritize our, you know, policy intervention by the policy makers, by the government. 
if you see this the cost efficiency in healthcare this data is a very very important coming from the economist if you will see this the ranking in terms of a spending and ranking in terms of the outcomes both situation situation of india is very less in comparison to china brazil united states you know united kingdom germany canada having a better japan australia switzerland all our situation take into consideration of the both healthcare spending and then the uh, outcomes such correlates are very very important in order to improve our uh, understanding particularly on the cost effectiveness now i would like to through this diagram i would like to put before you the whole uh, structure of how we can deal health and well being in our country like india you know urban air quality is very very important water quality if you will see the urban air then we have indoor outdoor uh, urban water if you will see the surface water underground water this all you know uh, are the very important source of urban environmental pollution and we we have the deteriorating air quality and causing respiratory diseases on the other hand if you will take the uh, urban water then Uh, the contamination of water quality even sometimes the shortage of water and then causing the water borne diseases that is a very very important aspects in our country now i would like to take the data from uh, kolkata few important uh, statistic taking from the kolkata and you can see that situation of uh, maybe so2 uh, no2 rpm spm you know annual average concentration of ambient air quality in kolkata during 10 to 11 that data uh, has been analyzed and so2 situation is better but if you took the no2 we have very substantial pressure and uh, uh, existence of pollution rpm also and also the uh, spm so except so2 the situation of other factor is very bad now i would like to put before you here seasonal concentration of ambient air quality in kolkata and winter season has the highest concentration of pollutants where the recorded value goes much beyond the permissible limit the lowest value is recorded during the monsoon and post monsoon period it is very important also to examine the uh, before monsoon and the post monsoon period air quality trends if you will see an increasing trend of air quality in kolkata for the parameter of no2 and rpm 2009 to 10 and 10 11 examine and it is found that beyond the national standards so2 level has shown much below the permissible level and recorded a decreasing trend so so2 level is very good you know now in big metro city we have the cng for commercial vehicles many steps taken and you can see the influence of such a step on the data trends of water quality if you see here also i think we have uh, do level you can see bod level all exceeding in the permissible level uh, limit bod little bit better but particularly the do level dissolved oxygen is very bad situation and then the uh, uh, fc and tc also very serious ground water quality ground water quality in kolkata had recorded high level of mercury and tds concentration this is a very very dangerous for our health and the health, uh, people are becoming at risk high concentration of mercury is due to the establishment of lead smelting and battery manufacturing and in many major and um, uh, metropolitan city you can find existence of urban heat islands heat islands means we have the more temperature in comparison to surrounding area now you can see the high temperature were observed in northern and western part of delhi which is most densely built up residential area these areas have undergone 
maximum land yield land cover change. What I would like to bring before you, there is a positive relationship between land yield land cover change and urban heat islands. Other factors are like uh, thermal power plants, the area closer to thermal power plants having the more heat islands, area closer to transport node area closer to industrial area, we have many industrial area in Delhi. So, uh, uh, one can see a large existence of urban heat island. At the seasonal level, the lowest differences observed during the cloud cover monsoon season, the decreased differences in temperature across Delhi during the wet monsoon season may be attributed to the role of increased thermal admittance in less urbanized area. Maximum differences were observed during late afternoon hours with heating of near surface air produced by outgoing long wave radiation. Now you can see here urban heat island. This map is a combination of four maps under GIS integration. First land use land cover change, transport node, area closure to thermal power plant and then area closure to uh, industrial area. And you can find the large part of northern side, western side we have the low heat islands, but in the central part we have the more uh, heat islands. Increased discharge of untreated uh, sewage, you can see total dissolved solids and you can see this the how Jamuna, the right side this map. When Jamuna enter into Delhi, the water quality is better, but when go out from the Delhi, we have the high concentration of pollutants in uh, river due to the several pollutants coming from uh, sewerage from the industrial sources, from other uh, hospital and other sources. Solid waste is a very, very important. It contributes to 66 percent of India's methane emission and third largest uh, emitter of methane in India, this uh, uh, improper solid waste. Causing the climate change, this is much higher than the global average of 3 percent methane emission from solid waste. So, almost the double you can see. Improper management of municipal solid waste cause half hazard inhabitants about 90 percent of the municipal solid waste is disposed of unscientifically in open dumps, landfill sites, many landfill sites already filled up creating problem to public health and environment. We do not have even the a space for new landfill sites. The main purpose of solid waste management is to minimize the adverse effect on the human and environment. Now you can see in the all different city, we have the waste uh, per capita per day and highest we have in Delhi and Hyderabad, the two city having and the Chennai, Chennai also, Delhi, Hyderabad, Chennai, these two, three city having a very, very if you see the recyclable, you know, uh, we have the more in uh, Bangalore and already many initiative in even in Chennai, many initiative taken uh, by the community organization for collection of solid waste and also the processing, recycling, resource recovering from the, uh, now uh, from the waste. Here you can see the existing landfill sites three places, Bhalaswa, Gajipur and Okhla, all three places I think you can find the exceeded the prescribed limit. Solid waste methane emission in India, you can see gradually the increasing and, and uh, municipal solid waste and then the methane emission also. So, one can see a very positive relationship between these two. The total at, uh, trend of solid waste generation and then the methane emission. And so, it is very important for us to see the impact on the air, water, land, also looking the health impact on community, rag pickers, stray animals 
and few important data I would like to relate with the different type of diseases. Again, I would like to take the few dis uh, case study from the few dispensary of Kolkata. The patient with respiratory diseases constitute more than 70 percent of the total respondents. You know, this data is based on the people's response. It is very important for us to understand the people's mind and compare with uh, hospital data. Among the respiratory patients, the disease like influenza with 35.7 percent and acute ARI, acute you know, respiratory infection with 21.4 percent are prominent. The waterborne disease constitute almost 27 percent. You can see here the different type of the symptoms and the sign, hemoglobin respiratory and waterborne disease like cough, you know, very abnormal uh, situation, pain, respiratory arrest, vomiting, sickness, this several type of the way we tried to know about the people's mind and trying to link with the, uh, then also we tried to link with occupation like children, retired clerk, students, housewives, industrial workers, marginal workers, how they are affected different, uh, affected differently. And a student daily they go to school and colleges, they are affected uh, very severely by this process. I would like to take another, you know, uh, case study from another dispensary. And you see the patient with respiratory disease have constituted 90 percent of the total respondents, where ARI with 86 percent is the single largest of all diseases. Only 9.3 percent respondents are having waterborne diseases, cough, abnormality of breathing, sickness, illness, and headache are some of the notable symptoms noticed among the respondents. So, we tried to give the some alternative to them and then trying to find some information from the people. Now, I would like to on the basis of data collected from the people and dispensary, I would like to highlight the major issue. This includes the following. People living in the slums are more vulnerable to environmental pollution. Among the respiratory patient, the disease namely acute respiratory infection are very much prominent in all the three survey dispensary. The patient with respiratory diseases are more in number than the waterborne diseases. It is almost all the dispensary, the patient with respiratory alignment are, element are outnumber the patient having waterborne disease. A school going child and household housewives are vulnerable group to the environmental pollution. So, the children and the housewives are the vulnerable group more prominent, you know, we found in the case of rag pickers, particularly here I would like to case of, uh, you know, Delhi and you can find the, they are facing the problem of injuries, jaundice, chest pain, asthma, cough, plus cholera and some other, you know, data. Mortality from, uh, uh, you know, heart disease, TB and pneumonia, you can see this the continuously increasing de starting from the 1996 to 2010, you know. And here the, uh, I would like to mention particularly that the uh, uh, over 9 million TB uh, suspects were examined by uh, the some new techniques and found that over 14 million cases were registered for treatment. 79 percent all registered TB cases know their HIV status. So, eliminating the uh, TB is very, very important aspects and already the many initiative taken. Impact of you can see here respiratory organs, various order of respiratory illness and deaths are found. URT diseases 9 in 2006 to 499 into very substantial increase you know happen in case of Calcutta. LRT disease reduced to nearly half 89 to 598 so better situation other diseases 
you know largest contributors of precipitin uh, induced mortality this is the uh, notably in all times periods males are much vulnerable than females because they uh, are going to work they live outside of the home age wise composition if you see here also decline from children from 507 in 2006 to 812 in 2010 increase for the old and middle age groups most vulnerable age group is above 7 70 years so old age people are also becoming at risk it is also very important to examine the distance and distance travel to seek the different type of treatment particularly here i have taken the two you know situation the data coming from the nsso data and uh, all india and urban and you can see then the situation of urban area in the more better particularly if you see the distance travel to seek the ipd treatment but in rural area dispensaries uh, health sub centers primary health centers these all are located far distance from uh, the uh, settlements it is very important to improve uh, such services in our rural area how the uh, geospatial technology can play the very important role you know you can take emergency services service delivery environmental health uh, uh, coming to municipal solid waste you know i would like to mention about the reduce uh, you know reuse recycling these are the very very important aspects impact impact of nanotechnology is very very important you know in this context in all area water treatment disease diagnostic drug delivery food processing is very very important uh, herbal home remedy is very very important i think Uh, uh medicinal plants now uh, the uh, last year nobel prize of the medicine uh, gone to the one chinese you know lady who practice you know uh, using the medicinal plants and traditional medicine so now we have a lot of a scope for applying in our country also so it is very important for us to now examine that how we can make a difference through capacity building getting sanitation and hygiene right paying attention to gender children old age people you you can see the many preventive measures we have to uh, adopt like ways to reduce your cancer risk you know like who avoid mosquito bites focusing on youth responsibility of environment monitoring the progress and finally i would like to tell you that this all aspects the disease data socio economic data land use land cover change all can be examined in a in an integrated way uh, uh, using system approach here you can see this development of new conceptual model of the processes uh, then use of system tools and formal simulation models integration of various sources and types of data including spatial visual quantitative qualitative data in conceptual and formal simulation model and to identify data gaps that must be filled in advance understanding of the system and urban governance is also another part like you can health policy sectoral integration empowering citizen participation so in this way you know through good governance and then taking into consideration of the system approach we can move in the area of direction which may be considered is a better or uh, health for all thank you on that note i would like to thank sir for this very interesting discussion and i would like to thank you dear friends for watching our show stay tuned and keep watching thank you <laughs>